Hello, I am Gary Simpson and welcome to my podcast. I will be discussing organisational change and culture at Leicester City Football Club. Sport organisations are in a constant state of change. The focus in this presentation is not on the day-to-day change evident in all sport organisations, but plan change. Change that a sport organisation develops and implements. The aims of this podcast are to recognise why organisations change, to identify the type of strategic change used, to understand the importance of change management, and to demonstrate the importance of sustaining change. Leicester Foss FC were founded in 1884. In 1919, Leicester Foss ceased trading and reformed as Leicester City Football Club. The Foxes Never Quit is the slogan of Leicester City, and in brief, this slogan is an insight into Leicester City's traditional culture. When we think of a team that never quits, we think of a strong bond the stakeholders have at the club. And this is what I will show in this podcast. There are many definitions on organisational change. I will be using the following. Organisational change is a process that optimises performance as it works towards its ideal state. So why do organisations change? This depends on the approach that change is viewed. Van de Ven and Paul, 1995, proposed that the course of organisational change can be explained by one of three theories. I will be using the life cycle by John Kimberley. The life cycle approach sees organisations going through stages just as humans or animals and these stages are referred to by various names. I will be using Born, Develop, Decline and Cease to Exist, Slack Atel 2012. Of course, organisations do not necessarily follow the life cycle and some will be born, develop, decline and through some change will begin the development process all over again. Applying this to Leicester City Football Club. In the 2008-2009 season, Leicester won League One under the owner Milan Mandrit and the following season they finished fifth in the championship losing to Cardiff City in the playoffs. As a result, Milan Mandrit believed the change was needed to continue the development of Leicester City and to get them back into the Premier League. Since the change of owners, Leicester have continued to grow and not only did they make a return to the Premier League, they won the league in the 2015-2016 season. Peters 1990 claimed that the paradoxical nature of change stems from the fact that a sport organisation must change if it wishes to remain competitive. This supports the approach I have used as change can be identified by the life cycle. New leadership initiated the internal change at Leicester City. Internal change is often initiated by a change agent whose job it is to ensure that a sport organisation makes the necessary changes to maintain or increase effectiveness. The change agent is Fisheye, who is a transformational leader. According to Bass 1985, this type of leadership goes beyond expectations. Yang Atal 2009 stated that the most common known targets of organisational change include vision, strategy, structure, systems, technology and the one we will be focusing on, culture. The area of change at Leicester City was the internal environment. Changes that occur in the organisation's internal environment are people, structures, technologies or processes. Slack Atel 2012 stated people changes are directed towards improving employees' performance, skills, attitudes, behaviour and loyalty to the organisation, as well as enhanced leaders' subordinate relationships, group unity and employee sense of achievement. The change that was implemented at Leicester City had an impact on the people of the organisation, which will be evident. There are several types of strategic change that the change agent can adopt to help their organisation achieve desired future state. The four types of change are shown in this model. Change can be classified by the extent of change required and the speed at which change is achieved. Leicester City already had a strong culture prior to the new owner taking over the club. For example, Nigel Pearson had assembled a faithful group of staff around him whilst in League One with the likes of Steve Walsh who was the head of recruitment, not to be confused with the club legend Steve Walsh. Pearson and Walsh assembled a squad with no bad apples during their first spell at the club. Andy King commented on Steve Walsh saying, he scouts not just talent, but personality, hunger, drive and team ethic. 
You can have all the best players in the world, but if they don't want to work as a group, you have no chance. It is evident that Leicester City had the right staff and players to develop the club. And what Fisher wanted to do was build upon the culture that already existed. From this model, we can see that Leicester City's change path was adaptation, as change can be accomplished within the existing culture and can occur over time. We will now look at the change that was implemented at Leicester City. The strategic change within Leicester City Football Club. The desired state of Leicester City was to fine tune the culture over time to bring success to the organisation. Culture is referring to its members' collective values, norms, and basic assumptions. Chanatal, no date. When put in simple terms, it basically means how we do things around here. Simon Chadwick, 2016, stated business is influenced by the place its managers and owners are from. The owner is from Thailand and a Buddhist. Buddhism is a way of life, and one of the main beliefs is to spread good karma. Simon Chadwick, 2016, stated, Karma is that you send positive energy out, because what you send out comes back to you. Send out good karma, and good things will come back to you. This is what the owner is always trying to apply to Leicester City. For example, on away games, the club offer £10 anywhere on the Foxes travel, and give the travelling fans gifts such as t-shirts, scarves, vouchers to spend at the away stadium or an English breakfast on the coach. He takes players out regularly to different restaurants. He takes them on frequent trips to Thailand and always doing the players favours and even lent his own helicopter to Kasper Schmeichel to deal with personal matters so he could extend his holiday with his family. He also arranges many parties for the players. Wes Morgan stated the owner looks after us. He takes us out to places. These are just a few selected examples. All the above examples are what we call a spreading the good karma in Buddhism. Fara, the chief of monks in 2016 stated, Leicester's achievements have everything to do with the owner's pursuit of confidence boosting karma. Change management is the process, tools and techniques to manage the people's side of change to achieve the required business outcome. So how was the Thai culture successfully embedded into Leicester City? I have used Kotler's model in the change management process as it focuses on the buying of employees as the focus for success of change. Kotler 1979 states that active ways to gain employee support includes education, communication, participation and involvement. And this model can be used as a good framework to achieve those outcomes. This is supported by the comment made by Simon Chadwick 2016. What Leicester's owner is looking for is not to leave without any input but to invite in others. This is the Buddhist business approach. I will now briefly discuss two stages from the eight stage model. Number one, create the catalyst for change. In the 2014-2015 season, Leicester City made the headlines for two reasons. One, beating Manchester United 5-3. Two, the Leicester players were blessed by monks ahead of the match. Chief Monk Farah stated in an interview in 2016 that the monks had been blessing the club for over the last three years which would take us back to the title winning season in the championship and I believe this was a significant catalyst for change. The monks became idea champions, people that are intensely interested and committed to propose the change. I will now look at number eight. To make change stick it should become part of the core of the organisation. Leicester City have reached this stage. Monks are now regular visitors to the Kim Power Stadium, where on either side of the pitch entrance are hung Buddhist shrines. The monks hang good luck peace round the neck of players and bless the pitch. Back in Bangkok, at the temple where Fisher worships, are cross inscribed with Leicester's name and colours, North Prop 2016. Hooth commented, it really just starts at the top, the owners I mean, they do everything for us. This filters down to the manager, his assistants and then the players. I have never had so much help from a club. This illustrates the culture of Leicester and the good karma at all levels within the club. Considering how to sustain change is clearly a crucial component of change management process. There are 11 main factors affecting sustainability and I'll be looking at one. Organisational is the policies, procedures, systems and structures. Three players were sacked after a goodwill tour of Thailand in 2015 for racism. If Leicester are to uphold the culture at the club, they must apply the same policy to all players. 
Shortly after the sacking of these players, Jamie Vardy was filmed making racist remarks to a customer in a casino. Leicester did not sack the player as he apologised. If the strong Thai culture is going to continue to flourish at Leicester, then they must not allow such behaviour by even their best players. The more of these factors that are addressed, the higher likely of a sustaining change. Thank you for listening to my podcast.